at 6 a.m. and Wild Child airing at 10.30 a.m. is rescheduled at 6.30 a.m. Well, a high school in Chicago has an innovative new program to help kids regulate their emotions. The school is using heart rate monitors to support students who need behavioral support. And Lauren Petty tells us how the program works. Jermaine Brown puts on this heart rate monitor to start his school day. Where's your heart rate right now? Jermaine is one of Mike Reed's students in a special program at Hillcrest High School for kids who need support managing their emotions. A lot of our students come to us with emotional and behavioral um, issues that we kind of try and tackle with them. These heart rate monitors are helping after the PE supervisor for District 228 had an idea. I said, hey, you really don't know me, but how would you feel if you wanted to partner up on this? They've just rolled out this new part, teaching the students about their coping skills um, and how that's connected to their heart rate. Do you think this could be useful in one of your behavior support programs? Um, and I jumped right in. The monitors were already in use in gym class, but it's not just physical activity that raises your heart rate. Anxiety, anger, and fear do too. When we started to bridge the gap to just kind of emotionally and like how our emotions affect our heart rate, it was a very natural transition for them. <laughs> For Jermaine, passing periods prove stressful. When there's a lot of people around me, when people are fighting, arguing, or you know, when I'm, you know, frustrated. And his teacher could track his heart rate spikes on these daily graphs. They know what normal is, and they know when it's not. And we go, like, hey, we should try our box breathing. We're able to help pinpoint those things for them and teach them coping strategies, such as taking a walk. Um, such as journaling, listening to music, um, maybe it's just a moment of deep breathing um, in the classroom to kind of lower their heart rate. As this school year ends, Hillcrest is already planning to use these heart rate monitors again next year and looking at ways to expand to help more students. At this point, and just it's a figuring out, okay, what's the best um, logistically, what's the best way to incorporate it? Jermaine has learned several coping skills. Take a deep breath, try and color, and take a walk that he says will help him this summer and hopefully beyond these walls by being able to incorporate the heart rate monitors into teaching them those skills we are helping them become more successful adults when they leave our program in our building <sighs> Well, research shows access to cervical cancer screenings needs to improve in rural areas. The study found that testing rates across the country fell between 2019 and 2022. Researchers are concerned that this could lead to more women being diagnosed with advanced stages of cervical cancer. And a national poll finds 20% of parents are giving their child melatonin to help them fall asleep. And a third, stay in the room until their child dozes off. University of Michigan researchers say that these tactics may work for now, but could increase sleep challenges in the long term. And the chances of migraines increases with the temperature. A study from the University of Cincinnati finds that for every 10 degrees hotter it gets, there's a 6% increase of a, heart, of a headache. Rather. However, researchers have found a treatment that offsets the heat association. Look where you can find a couple of showers and even a handful of some heavier pockets of rain moving through the valley, mainly for those coastal areas. So what is this a 5-10% coverage? We will see some more chances for some showers and storms later today. And if you want to walk your dog, the sooner the better. I know we have a couple of sprinkles out there right now, but I think we'll see slightly increased rain chances through the afternoon and evening. So just keep an eye on the radar. And of course, if you do hear thunder, head inside. But all in all, much of today, the rain is going to be fairly scattered or even more isolated so you will have a shot to still be outside today. This is the last day you're going to hear me say that for the rest of this week. Here's a look at this morning with a couple of sprinkles. Later this afternoon, we see a few more pop up, especially for those coastal areas. And then heading into Monday afternoon, we'll still have about a 20 to 30% chance to see some isolated showers and storms. Tuesday, we're going to see those rain chances go up. Of course, this is all associated with that area of low pressure that we have in the Atlantic. They're in the Gulf of Mexico for us. 70% chance to see a named storm here over the next seven days. Days. So this very well could become our first storm of the season, which would be Alberto. Now, right now we're expecting it to increase in strength and reach tropical depression, which would not warrant it being named. But if we do see a strength and into a tropical storm, we will get Alberto and we'll see that first name storm of the season. So that is definitely in the realm of possibility over the next few days. Either way, whether it becomes a depression or a storm, we are expected to receive 
very high rainfall totals over the next few days. So I don't want us to focus so much on exactly what strength this storm reaches, but instead how much rainfall we're going to get here in the valley. We're going to see our highest rainfall chances starting on Wednesday as this moves closer and closer to shore. Making